Welcome to Horse of the West and Oklahoma City. Winter brings locals downtown to enjoy the season. But inside the legendary Norick Arena at State Fair Park, the world's top three-year-old reining horses have gathered for the biggest reining event in the world, the National Reining Horse Association Futurity and Attaqua North American Affiliate Championship. Every mare that's bred, every foal that's born, everybody has a dream of having a Futurity horse. And tonight we get to see that happen. Just look up there, it's electricity. People come from all over the world. I see people from Japan, all over Europe, South America. This, this is it. This is... I don't know what to tell you, this is fantastic. have the highlights. Coming up on Your Horse Inside and Out, sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim, we're going to talk about horses and tying up syndrome. And we'll head to the training pen with NRHA professional Cade McCutcheon for some tips on what to look for when you try out a new horse. That's all coming up on Horse of the West. This is the 54th National Reigning Horse Futurity Open Championship, worth nearly a million dollars in cash and prizes alone, part of a $2 million championship show. Riders and fans come to Oklahoma City from every corner of the world to see the newest generation of the industry's top reigning horses. How much more exciting can an event be when you get to see the absolute best in the world and see people having a lot of fun with what they do? There are lots of futurities around the world that are not here. They may be regional or other horses go to. But tonight we're going to see what would we think is the best of the best, competing for a lot of money and certainly a lot of bragging rights. This is 2018 champion NRHA Million Dollar rider Jason Van Landingham of Whitesboro, Texas. Jason sets the bar for us on a stallion named Ceylon Vintage by NRHA Million Dollar sire, a sparkling vintage. Jason's won this event twice on that sire's offspring. This one is named Ceylon Vintage, and his son actually bought him for $3,200. Jason liked him so much, he bought him back. His son used the profit to buy some wheels. He needed a truck, so I, I, I gave him enough money for him to go buy a truck. And, uh, and he's been our most talented horse all the way through. Early in the futurity, Jason was still having a little trouble in the run down to the stop, and it nearly kept him from making this final. So he is thrilled to come out of the arena on finals night with a strong 222 from the judges. God bless, blesses us in a lot of different ways, and uh, this week it's been with the friends that we have. And he blessed uh, me to have Gunny Matheson in my life. And such a great friend. After the first go, I couldn't get this horse down the arena. I marked a 216. I was the last horse to make the semifinals. And he's back there at the back gate whenever I'm watching my video, and he says, I can help you get that horse running. So he said, just let him forget about the stop, and you just let him run down to that end fence, and, and it worked. Yeah, Gunny's a great guy. And that's all his work, not mine. I just, I just caught him in a bad spot, and I think sometimes it's easy to help somebody when they're in a bad place. So, up next is Martin Mulestetter of Scottsdale, Arizona, riding seven on seven by NRHA two million dollar sire Spooks Got a Whiz, owned by Ann Solbrecker. Got him bought for a month. Uh, I bought him from uh, Cole Price. They trained him. I think Clinton Anderson is a two-year-old. They trained him as a three-year-old. Showed him very successful. Uh, Cole Price, his wife Kelsey, won the non-pro Congress for charity, and they were kind enough to sell him to me. So I got him a month ago on a Sunday. I left on Monday to go to the last pre charity of the year. Rode him for five days. Uh, we did really well there. We won the uh, pre charity there, and here we are. Martin takes the lead with a two twenty-two and one half. Craig Smursall is an NRHA $4 million rider who is also based in Scottsdale. He has the maximum of three horses qualified for the final, and here's his first, another son of a sparkling vintage, this one out of the big-time producer Starjack Miss. The stallion is owned by Craig's longtime client and friend Tim Anderson, who spotted him at a sale in Texas. Tim saw him. I never saw him until the day we picked him up in the stock trailer. He wasn't halter broke. We shoot him in the trailer, and, uh, and uh, you know, he's, he's a... Uh, 
become a quick favorite. Craig and Starjack Vintage earn a 220 and a half. 19-year-old Cade McCutcheon is the product of two legendary reigning families, the McQuays and the McCutcheons. He's been riding since before he could walk, but this is his first year as a professional trainer, and it has already been a heck of a rookie season. Cade tied Craig Smursall at the inaugural run for a million in Las Vegas, and now here he is with three horses qualified in the NRHA Futurity Open Final. These are really good horses, you know, there's not really anybody my age especially that has this horse, horses like this, I'm, I'm very grateful for my owners. Because without them, you know, it doesn't matter how good or what, what you can do, you gotta have the horses to, to run underneath you. But here in the open final, Cade takes a commanding lead with a 224 and a half on Super Mario, a horse we first saw under Gunny Matheson at the North Central Reining Horse Association Futurity in St. Paul, then under Cade at the Arizona Best of the West. Gunny sent him to me right after he showed him in Minnesota this year. He said, just ride him, tell me what you think. And then he came back later that week and said, hey, I'm going to come get him. He brought his trailer and everything. Cade says he talked Gunny into selling the horse by NRHA million dollar sire Gunna Trasha, and he found a client to buy him. I knew from the second I swung a leg over him, I needed to keep that horse, and I wasn't going to let anybody else have him. It, once he got to my place, he wasn't leaving. Then Super Mario was spotted at the Arizona show by romance novelist and rainer Brenda Joyce. Brenda called me and said, hey, I want to have a horse with you. What about Super Mario? And we got a deal done. And, and she's been great to deal with ever since. She's, uh, she's amazing. You know, to trust me with that kind of money, you know, it, it means a lot to me. I saw Cade showing this horse at Best of the West. I was sitting in the stands with my husband, and I said to Rick, I want to buy this horse, and I want to keep it with Cade. It was beautiful, and it was magic. We'll see if Cade and Super Mario's 24 and a half will hold up with 19 horses still to go, including Shines Like Spook by NRHA Hall of Fame member and NRHA $6 million sire Smart Spook out of the Hall of Fame mare and million dollar producer Ebony Shines. This horse is owned by Hall of Fame member Roseanne Sternberg. Earlier this year she asked me if I wanted to, to, um, to try him and, and you know I did and I said oh, yeah I think he, you know, he, could, he could go pretty good. So, um, so here we are. Martin earns a 220 even to slip into fifth place. Up next, six time Futurity champion Sean Flarida and Casey Deary on the son of the horse he rode to his first two Futurity championships. Well, that mare was incredibly special to me, kind of jump started my career. And uh, I had the good fortune of showing his full sister here last year, and she was third. And We'll see how it goes for Casey and the others in the NRHA Futurity Open Championship final from Oklahoma City coming up. Coverage of the NRHA Futurity Open Championship Final is generously sponsored by Cedar Ridge Stallion Station, producing champions from the pasture to the show pen. You're watching Horse of the West on RFD-TV, presented by the Oklahoma City Convention and Visitors Bureau. There's so much to do, I couldn't even fit it all into one weekend. Whitewater rafting at River Sports, indoor rock climbing, nightlife, amazing food and restaurant scene, bars, shops, all within walkable distance. And I live in Nashville, that's a big food town, but I think Oklahoma City could hold a candle to any other big foodie town. I don't think people really know that it's here and it's so close. Welcome back to Horse of the West and the National Reining Horse Association Futurity Open Championship Final. 19-year-old first-year professional Cade McCutcheon is in first with a 224 and a half. Martin Muehlstetter and 7-on-7 seven seven are in second with a 222 and a half, followed by Jason Van Landingham and Sail on Vintage with a 222. Here's a horse that got everybody's attention earlier in the year with a win at the Rocky Mountain Reining Horse Association Summer Slide. And then at the All-American Quarter Horse Congress Open Futurity, both under NRHA Million Dollar Rider Franco Bertolani. This is Holly's Hijacker by HF Mobster. They had one of the two highest composite scores in the prelims. Here, they earned a 221 and a half to move into fourth place. He got a big heart. He gave me a lot of things except his turnarounds. I didn't warm up a little good to turn around. He, was, he can turn away more than what he did inside tonight, but he still stopped big and, and circles great. So that's a little hurt me a little during the week. I, I, I had to save him, but he, he did his job tonight. Shine Colt Shine was the sale topper at the NRHA Markel Futurity Prospect Sale here in Oklahoma City last year. The stallion is by Shine Chick Shine, a stallion ridden to an NRBC championship by this man, 
Sean Flaherty of Springfield, Ohio. He's an NRHA Hall of Fame member and all-time leading rider. Shine Colt Shine was purchased by Gaynor Revenberg for $220,000 last year as a two-year-old. We'll need a 225 to take the lead. The score from the judges, a 223 and a half, which will slide Sean and Shine Colt Shine into second place. Casey Deary is based in Weatherford, Texas, and for the second time in two years, he's made the finals on offspring of America's Next Gun Model, a mare he rode to this championship in 2012. Now, Casey's won a second Futurity Championship since then, but he thinks this stud may be the nicest horse he's ever brought to Oklahoma City. But he is still a three-year-old, and he makes a few mistakes. Despite that, they still come out with a 221 and a half. But it's a lot of fun to have a horse that can have major bobbles like that and still catch up and be competitive. So I've had that issue with him the whole, not that particular issue, but in each round, uh, we've had a little bobble that most of the horses that I've brought here would have been out of the hunt, and if that horse is good enough, he can fight back and still be competitive. So, a little confidence. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I know if I get him lined out, he's going to be a tough one to beat. He's a special individual. Abby Lingle of Gainesville, Texas, is in her very first NRHA Futurity Level 4 Open Final. She didn't grow up in an equestrian family, so she had to start out on lesson horses. Riding through the storied gateway of champions here at State Fair Park on finals night has been a long time goal for Abby. The first Futurity I ever, I ever came to in 2007, I said my dream was to be in these finals one day and, and that's finally happened so it's, it's made all the hard work pay off. Abby's riding Dallas Schwartz Making Diamonds by NRHA Million Dollar Sire Whiskey and Diamonds. She'll slide in a point behind her former boss Casey Deary with a 220 and a half. Oh this is a great little mare. I've had her about three months now. Uh, she's owned by Gary and Dallas Schwartz in Canada. Gary actually is a non-pro and he did all the training on her up until about three months ago, he did a great job. So Cade McCutcheon is still leading with a 224 and a half on board Super Mario as he rides into the arena on Guns and Dynamite by NRHA $3 million sire Gunner's Special Night, owned by Kirsten Booth. You know, right after the fraternity last year when I turned in my non-pro card, she, she sent him to me and, and he was awesome right from the get-go. I knew this horse had a chance to be, to be special and he, he's proven it to me every time I've gone in the pen. He's, he's a really, really good horse. And he is now the NRHA Futurity Open Reserve Co-Champion with a score of 223 and a half. Kirsten Booth's Guns and Dynamite and Cade McCutcheon will tie Sean Flarida and Gaynor Revenberg's Shine Colt Shine for second and split the reserve championship. That means 19-year-old Cade McCutcheon, a first-year professional in his first NRHA Level 4 Open Championship final, will finish second and first with his 224 and a half on Super Mario owned by Storybook Stables. Kate also wins first and second in levels three and two for combined paychecks on these two horses of more than $341,000. That plus his previous earnings will make him the youngest NRHA million dollar rider ever, as well as the youngest NRHA Futurity Open champion in history. Unbelievable. I don't know where to begin. There's, there's, this is, I never thought this could happen. I really didn't. Uh, Especially my first year, you know, this was the goal all along was to try and be the winner of this event. To be first and second, it's unbelievable my first year. I'm, I'm just very fortunate. I mean, a lot, a lot of luck goes into it. You know, I'm a very small part of the piece of the puzzle. There's the horse, the owners, all the people, the people that trained him to begin with. You know, there's, there's so many things that go into it, and it all just fell into the right place tonight. Gunny Matheson says he has no regrets about selling Super Mario to Cade, whom he's known since he was a baby. I sold him to a buddy and I, I told him the day that I sold him to him, I said, I don't think I can win the fraternity on him, but I know you can. I told him that. I can't believe he did. <laughs> How does it feel? I'm in shock. I didn't buy him to win the fraternity. I didn't expect that. I bought him for a long-term relationship going forward. I want a long-term relationship. The horse is sound. He's got a great mind. He's totally athletic. We're going to bring him along, show him to uh, maximize his potential. Owner Brenda Joyce, an author of more than 50 romance novels, has made her living writing storybook endings, but she says this isn't one. This is the beginning of his story, not the end of his story, the beginning. Coming up, Cade McCutcheon says he knew Super Mario was special from the first moment he threw a leg over him. What does he look for in that first ride on a horse? 
Cade will join us in the training pen to talk about that coming up in Training Secrets. Coverage of the NRHA Futurity Open Championship Final is generously sponsored by Cedar Ridge Stallion Station, producing champions from the pasture to the show pen. Your horse inside and out with Dr. Joe Carter, sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim. Tying up syndrome in horses is something that we frequently see in Western performance horses and horses really that do athletic work. The old uh, terminology for it or, or common name for it was Monday morning disease because we would see these horses that work six days a week as draft horses pulling wagons or plows. They would have Sunday off and then Monday morning they'd had their normal grain, which you should back horses off grain when they're not in exercise just so they don't accumulate the sugars and things in their muscles that cause the tying up syndrome. Um, you'd see that on Monday morning, and so they called it Monday morning disease. And these horses will frequently start getting muscle cramps. They can get them in their shoulders. They frequently get them here in their croup, in their hind end, their glutes, their hamstring muscles are real common locations. And they'll just be anchored, real crampy. Those muscles will be really hard when you palpate them instead of being soft and pliable. Dehydration is a common uh, cause for muscle cramping and tying up syndrome. So we frequently give these horses IV fluids to rehydrate them. One of the ways to check for dehydration in your horse is to do a skin tint where you actually pinch the skin like this and then let it fall back down. If it falls back slowly, that means they're dehydrated. If it falls back quickly, that means they're not dehydrated. You can also look at their mucous membranes in their lips, uh, their gums around their teeth and push your thumb on that and then release that and you'll see the pinkness, it'll blanch out white and then return. Uh, we'd like to see that time be less than two seconds, but if you feel like you've got a horse that's experiencing tying up syndrome, call your veterinarian. It can be a life-threatening emergency and get consultation. And I'm Dr. Joe Carter with your horse Inside and Out. Your horse Inside and Out is sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim. Before making any decisions about your horse's health, be sure to contact your veterinarian. There's so much to do, I couldn't even fit it all into one weekend. Whitewater rafting at River Sports, indoor rock climbing, nightlife, amazing food and restaurant scene, bars, shops, all within walkable distance. And I live in Nashville, that's a big food town, but I think Oklahoma City could hold a candle to any other big foodie town. I don't think people really know that it's here and it's so close. Now from the Training Secrets Fault, Cade McCutcheon tells us what he looks for when he tries a new horse. This is a three-year-old mare that we just got in training a couple days ago, and this is the first time I've been on her, so I'm just gonna test her out and see what she's like. When I try one, I wanna just start off with the basics, just lope them off and see, what, see how they react to my leg. One that I, I want one that I can wrap my leg around and that they'll stay stay with me and not try and leave because on finals night I when I squeeze my feet and really run I want to make sure that they're still thinking about me and not just running so that that's the first thing that I do is I'll just lope off And I'll squeeze my feet here and just see what kind of response I get. And a lot of them at a young age maybe haven't done it, so it'll take them two or three tries to really start thinking about your feet. And I'll squeeze again. Like this mare is pre pretty naturally low headed. I like that for sure. <laughs> and she wants to come back there when I squeeze my feet. Then when I stop here, I just want to see what kind of move they make with their butt. See if they really want to push and get up under themselves. When I go to turn, I want to see what they do with their inside foot. It always 
The biggest turners to me are the ones that can really reach, really reach with that inside leg. The ones that want to just step close, they get real short and choppy and they don't have that big pretty motion to them. This mare is a little quieter, you know, so, and loping around, I like that, but turning, I wish maybe she had a little bit more, more zip for me, but this is one that feels like she's gonna be a, a really nice non-pro type mare. And there's, there's a lot of, a lot of good reasons to have one of those too. She takes a nice clean step both ways. She's been very well trained up to this point. Feels like this is the first time I've ridden her actually. And I think she I think that she's gonna turn plenty. And she feels like she's moving that foot and there's a, a nice cadence to it. Doesn't feel like she's getting tight with her front leg. When we come back, some thoughts from Cade on his amazing first year as an NRHA professional. I know it's not going to be like that every year for sure. There's so much to do, I couldn't even fit it all into one weekend. Whitewater rafting at River Sports, indoor rock climbing, nightlife, amazing food and restaurant scene, bars, shops, all within walkable distance. And I live in Nashville, that's a big food town, but I think Oklahoma City could hold a candle to any other big foodie town. I don't think people really know that it's here and it's so close. And a few more thoughts from 19-year-old Cade McCutcheon on his amazing first year as an NRHA professional. I really still can't put it in her perspective. It was just everything lined up. It was, there was a lot of luck. I know how hard it is to get to the finals. For everything to line up like it did, it, it takes a lot. And I know I'm gonna go back a bunch of times, but I thought was thinking the whole time as this happening, it takes so much to get to first place. You know, maybe that'll never happen again because it's, it's the biggest, biggest thing in raining. It's the hardest thing to do. And I just got lucky this year. I had the right horse, I had the right system, and everything fell into place. So where does Cade go from here? I guess next year maybe try and win the NRBC on Mario, you know, or, or then win the Derby, try and win the run for a million outright. You know, just try and keep winning, win as much as I can, be the number one rider again. Uh, that's, and so in the end, I can be the number one all time. That's, that's the end goal, is be the number one all time rider. And I'm the youngest million dollar rider, so I'm on a, on a good start, but there's a lot a lot of years left and there's a lot more to do. See more from Cade's interview on YouTube at Horse of the West and watch in the weeks ahead for coverage of the NRHA Futurity Non-Pro and Freestyle. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. See you then.